Hi everyone, welcome back. So I was just getting ready for a regular editing day. I wasn't planning on filming anything, but then an idea airdropped in my mind and I was like, I need to execute this look right now or I don't know what's going to happen. And I was like, I might as well film it. I have a feeling it may be really cool. And it also has to do with some newer launches. I have the new Danessa Myricks Groundwork Blooming Romance Palette, as well as the new Rare Beauty blushes. But now let's get this makeup look on my face right now. <laughs> Because I wasn't planning on filming, I did do my base off camera, but I'll catch you guys up to speed a little bit. Thankfully, this base is very similar to what I did in my previous video. So I started with my First Aid Beauty Bronze and Glow Drops. Then I followed up using my Urban Decay Face Bond Foundation. For my concealer, I used the new Say One. And for my bronzer, I used my Glowish bronzer, which is being discontinued. The whole Glowish line is being discontinued, which is kind of crazy. Um, so. This VIB sale, you might wanna stock up on this. <laughs> then I contoured using my Kaleido Symphony Contour Trio. I just used this shade right here. I'll have everything I used listed down below just in case if I forgot anything. This beauty right here is the new Danessa Myricks Blooming Romance Palette. I think this color story is stunning and I love the concept of these palettes and I'm happy to see that she is going to continue bringing them out. This one right here was the original, which I never really connected with, just as a quick side note. I think it's because it launched very closely to this Patrick Ta one. This one is just one of my favorite palettes ever, so this one kind of got lost. But I really enjoy the concept of these palettes, especially if you're a working makeup artist, because you can use these pretty much as everything, aside from foundation and concealer, I'm pretty sure. You can use these as blushes, bronzers, contours, brow pomades, lip colors, eyeshadows, all of it. So if you're unfamiliar with these palettes, you get two formulas in each color. So this one right here is like a putty, cream but powder hybrid and right here is a classic powder so i'm going to use one of these shades as a blush right now and because the pans are a little small for me to just dab right in there they made it easy that you can take out the pieces so i'm going to do that so i don't dip into multiple i'm taking the shade dreamy on this bk beauty 106 really packing it on there i'm going for like a draped blush look that's going to follow into an eye look I love those kind of looks. So I'm starting with Dreamy and I'm going to really pack it on here. And to use this as a blush, the formula feels a lot like the Glow Play blushes from MAC in a sense. So that kind of cushiony, squishy texture, but there's no shimmer in them. They're just flat, matte, creamy powders. Already that is just a stunning blush shade on its own. And I'm not really going for precision with this first color. Since it's going to be the lightest one, I'm just going to kind of map out kind of a C shape. And I might as well bring a touch towards my temple. Basically, I'm going to look a little feverish at first. Sick, but make it sickening. And while I'm at it, I think I'll use this shade as my nose blush. Maybe this corally kind of shade and this one. This one looks really pretty. So does this, so does this. So honestly, very loving this. Very loving this so much I can't speak normal English. Now I'm taking this Moda Pro Accentuate brush, which is kind of like this kind of a shape. And I'm taking that shade Adorn, still the creamy color. And then I'm going to focus this little higher. And I'm using different brushes for each color because I might want to go back in with like the first color to blend better or to amp it up. And with this one, I'm also going to take it a little more into the crease and on the brow. Taking my first color again just to help mesh that in. Now I'm thinking of grabbing an eyeshadow brush. Let's do this one, a Smith 247, and I'm going to take the shade Bliss. And let's go right on my outer corner first. I'm also just going to put some on my lower lash line here. I don't think I'll carry this onto my cheek. It's a little too bruise-like, which it's kind of looking like that right now, but I'm gonna try to move away from that because that's not the vibe. I wanna look like a blooming flower. I'm going to take that first pinky shade once again just to kind of feather this and to bring it closer to my eye right here. I didn't tuck it up enough. 
I'm going to grab an even smaller brush. This is a Nabla N201 and I'm going to add even more dimension. I'm just going to use the darkest shade. I'm not using any of the powders yet. I'll do that once I'm happy with the look and I wanna set it in place. And I'm using that darkest shade just to add a lot of depth around my eye to really bring them out. I'm grabbing Adorn again, which is that Coralie Red. I feel like I need to amp that up here. This is going to be a trust the process kind of look, a lot of layering and fading. And I'm going to take this shade Smitten right here. I think my brush is small enough just to get in there. Yeah. And then I'll fade the edges of that with this. And because it's lighter, I'm going to just wrap it around my face. I just put everything back. Everything was getting a little too chaotic. Now I'm using smaller brushes anyways. I'm taking that first dreamy color and I'm going to blow it out more into my crease here, especially in the inner corner. And I might even wrap a little bit all the way across my lower, just a little touch. Now I wanted to see what my lid would look like with a layer of crush, just to brighten it up. And I'll also bring that down here to brighten my inner corner. This formula is really fun to work with because you can just endlessly blend them and they just look so nice together. I think I'm ready to use some of the powders. I'm going to use that same brush I just used to set my lid with the powder version of Crush right, on, right here. I'm happy with that base. So before I add any other powders, I'm now going to dip into the new Rare Beauty highlighters. And I did swatch all of these on my cheeks yesterday, so I can um, link it down below if you wanna see that. It's on, it's everywhere. I posted it on Instagram Reels, YouTube Shorts, and TikTok. Um, but these are interesting. As far as blushes go, I wasn't really excited for this launch because I knew these were going to accentuate texture like crazy, and they do, but I think these are going to be more fun as blush toppers, if you like that kind of an idea, or if you're someone who blushes where you highlight, kind of like what I've done here a little bit. Otherwise, if you bring these blushes kind of closer to where everyone has pores, it's going to look very pore enhancing. I think I'm going to take this shade right here. Although the pearl looks really light, if you tilt it to the side, I feel like this is more tone on tone. Um, and this is the shade Cheer. So I'm going to take a Moda highlighting brush, I'm taking quite a bit of this, and I'm just going to layer it on top of this. And it's going to really adhere to that creamy base. And I'm going to take my time to really polish this pearl. I can say for certain right now, I will never really use these on their own as blushes, only as like matte blush additives. If I wanna take them to the next level like this, just in the highlighting zones. Many of you asked how these compared to the Heaven's Glow blushes from M Cosmetics. I would say they're complete different products. This is more of like a blush toned highlight, whereas the M Cosmetics ones look like creams on the skin. The pearl is super, super fine and uh, much less apparent and in your face as these are. I'm going to take this berry shade called Truth. Also, I did that. I chipped this one when I held them all up for my swatching video. <laughs> I was so mad at myself. I was like, damn it. And I'm using this right over the darkest areas because I think that shift will look really cool. And it do. And then I had the idea to take the shade Happy, which is really, really cute. It's a really cute pink one. And I'm going to wrap this in my inner corner. I hope it's going to turn out cool. So I'm touching down right here first, and then I'm going to sweep it upwards. Maybe I'll add a touch of happy on the outskirts as well, just to bring that everywhere. I'm going to take that around here. Here, if I really tilt my head, you can probably see the shifting better. Yeah, it's, it was missing that. Maybe let's do the shade Joy in the crease and following up to the brow bone. 
I'm getting excited. This is my vision. I was so scared there for a second. I was like, oh my God, this is looking super bruisey. But now I feel like I'm getting like a bloomed look kind of vibe. I'm now going to take the white highlighting powder from Rare Beauty, it's the shade Enlighten. And what am I doing with this? Oh yeah, I'm going to highlight my inner corner. And I'm also going to brighten up right in here. And on my finger, I'm going to put some right in the center to kind of backlight one of these other colors. And I'm feeling this one, Cheer. I think Cheer is my favorite out of all the all of these shades. I feel like it's the most highlighty. I feel like you could use this one as a highlighter with a little tint. I'll put it on top here so you can see what I mean. Like there's not as much of an under pigment to it. It's just like a really cute pinky highlight. Hard to tell because I did apply a little bit of that blush before. But if you see my swatching video, you might get a better feel for the product. Pretty, that's just pretty on its own, hey? Now you can kind of see what it would look like as just a classic blush topper or your own highlighter if you, someone's here, I gotta go. <laughs> That was my mom. She came over for a little surprise visit, but I just caught this eye up to speed and I'm liking what I'm seeing right now. I do look like I have a fever, but once mascara goes on and I jazz it up a little bit more, I think it's going to be really cool. Um, I do think it's missing like a cool pink and maybe even like an orange hue. So I've just grabbed my Dior blushes in pink and coral. I'm going to grab the pink one first and I'm imagining it right here just to like brighten it up and then maybe the orange corally shade around over here to like tie it into the bronze because I did kind of over bronze today for this kind of vibe going really really into your I want to look like an orchid or something Oh yeah, love that. And then I was like, what if I add a little bit of a green multi-shifting pencil? This is a Danessa Myricks liner in the shade Jade. So it looks green to me right now, but it also has like pink and blue and just all of it. So I thought that could be a fun addition. Like right in here. I already have so much product in there, it's not really going on good. Okay, I like that. It's subtler than I thought, but I think it works. It doesn't overpower everything, it just complements. God, this is so fun. I don't know if it's fun to watch because I'm kind of just silent and just <laughs> rubbing makeup on my face, but I'm thrilled right now. Okay, I'm going to curl my lashes quick and I thought it would all be brought together with burgundy mascara. Right? I don't know why I curled my lashes off camera, but I did. Um, but now let's go in. This is the L'Oreal Voluminous Original Mascara in Burgundy. Pissed off, it just completely took all the way the curl of my lashes. Every time I stray away from my Clio, I'm like so disappointed. But I guess it brings focus too everything else. I should have put a little fine layer of my Clio just for structure, good foundation, and then I should have gone over with this. I'm already bracing myself for the comments. Every time I do a fun look like this, there are people who are like, I would never wear this. It's like, that's okay. <laughs> you don't have to. It's just fun to play with makeup. Anyways, now for lips, I'm going to line them with the Jones Road pencil in nude pink. Oh, I think that, that suits that quite nicely. And then I thought, might as well try one of the new shades in the Patrick Tug glosses. Um, let's try Say Less. Actually, before I put that on the top, I'll try Need Her on top, just so I can see what side I like better. What lip are you on? 
this combo or this combo. I think they both work, but for some reason I like how this tone suits this a lot better. Let's give it a full lip try now. No, that was not the one. Mm -mm. It was a good match, don't get me wrong. I just felt like it took away from right here, you know? Could you feel me? Whereas I think this one complements it, but keeps the focus here. I'm so happy I stopped what I was doing to film this. Ooh, get out of here. But this is exactly what I had envisioned, but better. I'm so happy to see that these products actually collaborated the way I thought they would up here. I think this is striking. It feels so cute and colorful and springy. It really brought me life. I'll quickly talk about my thoughts on these new products. So first with this palette, I am very drawn to this color story. It's very inspiring to me. I like the versatility of it all. One thing I could go without though is the fragrance. It's very overpowering and it's honestly giving me a little bit of a headache. I don't smell it on my face, but when this palette is open, it's very strong. But other than that, I think this formula is so fun to work with. It almost acted like a watercolor, like every shade I used today just seamlessly blended together to create this beautiful shade. I love how you can't like pinpoint where one color starts and one color ends. It just all meshes in beautifully. And this formula just made it so easy to achieve that perfect seamless blend. I think this is such an awesome and useful palette, especially if you are a working makeup artist, like you have so much versatility in just this pretty compact, lightweight palette. I'm excited about it. For the Rare Beauty blushes here, I think I would recommend these to very specific people. If you are someone who places their blush where people would typically highlight, kind of like how I did it today, but pretend it's not as dramatic. Um, I think that's the only place that would actually look flattering. I personally don't think that these look really great on their own. As blush toppers, stunning as transitional shades on the eyes and all that, I think they're really pretty. But on their own, I think they're very unflattering and too pearly and metallic looking and unflattering looking. Like it just doesn't look natural to me. It really sticks off the face in like a in my face way. Like I'm like, put that away a little bit. That's how I feel about that. <laughs> I think they're very unique. Um, I will be using them for sure. But for just an everyday blusher, I don't think so. And that's going to wrap up today's video. I really hope you enjoyed it. If you did, make sure to give it a thumbs up. I'll have everything I used listed and linked in the description box down below. So feel free to check that out and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.